Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the phases of digestion. Um, so there are three overlapping phases of digestion that includes the cephalic phase, the gastric phase, and the intestinal phase. So I'll talk about each of those. And I do want to emphasize that these overlap. It's not in sequence one after another, that the three of these can be happening simultaneously, but it's just referring to three different aspects of digestion uh, that are taking place. Uh, so starting with cephalic, cephalic refers to the head. Um, so cephalic phase of digestion is referring to how um, the smell, sight, sound, and thought of food is activating different areas of the brain um, that is stimulating certain aspects of digestion and preparation for eating and digesting that food. Um, so maybe you've experienced this, that you weren't hungry, you weren't thinking about food, you weren't planning to eat, and someone says, hey, if I order a pizza, do you want any? Well, you went from not hungry and then saying, yeah, I might eat a piece or whatever, you know, and then by the time that pizza gets there, you're salivating and hungry and thinking about that pizza and can't wait to eat it. Um, and that's because you've activated the cephalic phase of digestion, which is before there even is food in front of you, um, that if you're thinking about food and preparing for food and expecting food, or maybe you smell it, maybe someone's cooking, you see it, um, whatever it is, I could just be imagining now we're all thinking about pizza, right? So we're activating the cephalic phase. Uh, because we're thinking about food. Um, and so that can activate the facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves that stimulate various secretions throughout the digestive tract to prepare for food. Um, and there is also research that um, seems to suggest that uh, we might even start to secrete insulin in response to thinking about sugary sort of foods. So like if you start thinking about, you know, a big donut or a piece of cake or something that you're imagining, let's say you're on a diet and you're not going to eat it, but you're thinking about it because you want it, you will still have the same, well, you may, it's in question in the literature, uh, but you might still have the same hormonal response, meaning insulin, um, to thinking about eating those foods as you do to actually eating them because your body is preparing as if you are about to eat those foods. Um, so, abstaining from those foods isn't enough. You have to have the mental fortitude uh, to try not to think about them throughout the day, which now I'm telling you, don't think about it. And it's like, don't think about elephants. You're going to think about elephants. Sorry. Um, okay. Gastric phase is what happens once the food reaches the stomach. Um, so at that point, there's chemical and mechanical breakdown of food in the stomach. Um, so both through the, the extreme acidity of the stomach juice um, or the gastric juice, um, and then also through hormones that are present, enzymes that are present, so that's the chemical breakdown. And then the mechanical breakdown is the twisting and mechanical movements of the stomach to actually physically break down the food that's there. Um, so the cephalic phase and the gastric phase absolutely overlap because you're still thinking about and imagining food and, and preparing, you know, in terms of nervous system preparation, um, even as you are starting to eat the food and the gastric phase begins, like you might be in the middle of your meal and already thinking about dessert or whatever it might be. So these two phases definitely overlap. Um, so during the gastric phase, the cells in the stomach are secreting gastrin, which is a hormone. Um, and gastrin will stimulate secretion of gastric juice. So that would be, I know it's a gross name, gastric juice and pancreatic juice. Like those are the proper names. Um, but it's referring to the acid and the enzymes and things that are produced in the stomach to incinerate whatever comes through. Um, so it stimulates secretion of large amounts of gastric juice. Uh, strengthens contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter. Um, so that's the sphincter that separates the esophagus from the superior portion of the stomach. Um, so we want that sphincter to close very tightly so that we're preventing backflow and that would be acid reflux if the acid from the stomach leaks up through that sphincter and into the esophagus. So we wanna prevent that because anyone who's had acid reflux knows that that is really unpleasant. Um, and it's counterproductive for digestion because you're just losing some of the acid that you want to stay in the stomach to um, break down the food.
Uh, gastrin also increases the motility of the stomach. So meaning that it causes more movement and motion in the stomach for mechanical breakdown. And it also relaxes the pyloric sphincter, which is the sphincter on the other end of the stomach, uh, separates the stomach from the duodenum, the small intestine. Um, so it relaxes that sphincter so they can start to have gradual emptying of the contents in the stomach go into the small intestine. So the intestinal phase is once food enters the small intestine. Um, technically at this point, it wouldn't be food. We would call it chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. Um, that's what we call it once uh, we swallow the bolus. So we swallow the food, it goes down to the stomach and mixes together. And then at that point we would call it chyme. So that chyme then starts to empty from the stomach into the duodenum and we enter the intestinal phase which again overlaps with the other phases, depending on if we're still eating and thinking about food. And um, even once the food starts to go into the intestine, we still of course have much left still in the stomach. So the gastric and intestinal phases overlap significantly. Uh, so the intestinal phase is mediated by the hormones cholecystokinin and secretin. Um, those are two hormones that are secreted by the duodenum in the small intestine. Um, cholecystokinin is secreted in response to partially digested proteins and lipids. It is not secreted in response to carbohydrates. It is just when we eat proteins or lipids in our food, then we secrete cholecystokinin. Um, that stimulates secretion of pancreatic juice full of enzymes and um, essentially baking soda helps neutralize the acid in um, the chyme that's coming from the stomach. Um, it also slows gastric emptying by promoting contraction of the pyloric sphincter. So it's working opposite the effects of gastrin. So gastrin was the hormone in the stomach that is trying to loosen up the pyloric sphincter to allow for gastric emptying. And then meanwhile, uh, cholecystokinin is um, working against that and trying to stimulate contraction of the pyloric sphincter to slow the amount of emptying. Because we want gastric emptying to happen gradually, we want it to be pretty slow, because the slower it happens and the longer it takes, um, the more of the contents of the chyme, the more of the nutrients that we're able to actually absorb and, and take up from that chyme. The faster it moves through the intestines, the more of it is lost in excrement because there, it's not there long enough for us to be able to absorb it. Um, it also produces satiety, meaning a feeling of fullness and satisfaction uh, by acting on the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus, the part in the brain is deciding whether we feel full or not. Um, and it's partly making that decision. It's influenced by cholecystokinin. So that is why when we eat foods that have a lot of protein and fat in them, that they tend to promote more of a feeling of fullness is because carbs don't stimulate secretion of cholecystokinin. So we're not going to have that action on the hypothalamus to tell us that we're full. Uh, secretin is another hormone that is secreted by the duodenum. Uh, and this is in response to the acidic chyme. So it's the acidity of the chyme that's coming in that stimulates secretion of secretin. Um, and then that hormone stimulates the flow of pancreatic juice um, because it is rich in bicarbonate ions, uh, which is very alkaline. So it's, it's coming in to act opposite the very acidic chyme um, because we don't want that extremely acidic chyme to travel all the way through the small and large intestines. We need to neutralize that because the intestines uh, have a much more alkaline environment than we had in the stomach. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.